Hey everyone, Megan Olivi here in Montreal, Canada. I'm joined by the champ, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. Demetrius, we're gonna play one round. It's where we talk for the equivalent of one UFC round. So we'll put five minutes on the clock. We'll see what we can fit in here. Congratulations, baby Maverick. Now a father of two, not only do you have a brand new baby, but you are defending your belt again. How do you find a balance in life for that? Me and my wife, we were never the type of couple to shy away from stopping our life just because of my career. So for me, this isn't my first rodeo. You know, I had a tire in 10 days before I defended my belt in Seattle, and here we go again, we're in Montreal to defend it. When they told you the date of the fight, were you, was there any hesitation, or were you like, hey, this is what we gotta do? Obviously, there's always hesitation just because, you know, I wanna, you know, fight. You know, it's been seven months since I fought last time, and I also wanna be there for the birth of my son, so it worked out just perfect. You were on a little bit of a hiatus there. Was that by choice? Did you say, hey, I wanna slow down? Because you were defending your belt every three or four months. As somebody in the UFC said, I need to put you on ice. You're, you're, you're fighting way more active than the contenders are, yeah. which is totally fine, you know, because I wanna be an active guy, and I'm an active champion. I'm young, and this is how I make my money. So for me, the UFC needs to have a couple things shake out in the uh, flyweight division, and now we have a clear-cut contender. The contender is Kyoji Horiguchi. Hasn't lost in the UFC yet. Where do you feel he poses the biggest threat? His distance, his movement, for a guy like me, for my background and my style, is that when a guy is trying to move a lot and, and avoid and looking for you to counterattack, he's, he's banking on you to make a mistake to expose yourself so he can knock you out. So for us, we're just gonna go out there and approach it just like any other fight. Matt Hume, always in your corner, always coaching you. Does he constantly have something new to bring to the table for you so that you don't feel like, hey, I, this is kind of getting old for me? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, he, he brings uh, fresh stuff to the table, then he also brings stuff to the, to the table that makes me very uncomfortable when I'm training to where I'm like this is stupid like I don't know why we're doing this doing this you know which is good because you know when it comes to the fight time it's so much easier what does he have you doing that's weird uh, just sparring guys who are longer bigger and, and then they, they imitate Horiguchi and then you know when you when somebody's imitating Horiguchi that's 5'11 with a longer reach yeah. so it's a lot harder for me to get to him Sure. It's when I fight a guy like Horiguchi who's 5'4", well he says he's 5'5", five, five, but he's actually 5'4", five, 5'3". Five, five, Everybody's always fighting for that extra inch yeah. in, our, in my yeah. division. <laughs> um, it becomes a lot easier. You've made a point now to finish basically everyone they've put in front of you. Is that the goal out there now to always go out there and say, hey, not only am I a champion, not only am I dominant, but now I am a finisher and when we talk about people who finish fights, you're going to include my name. Yeah, absolutely. I always go out there and I always stick it to my challengers. Like I haven't had a challenger walk across the cage and like, I'm gonna get in your face. I'm gonna I'm taking I'm taking this from you. Right. I'm always doing that to my opponents, even though they don't have the belt. You know, as Mike Goldberg and Joe Rogan always say, you gotta beat the champion and I, I don't ever foresee somebody in my eyes coming across the cage. You know, there's been a couple guys who've done it, but you know, they they've come short, but I don't think this one's gonna be that case. Let's talk about the flyweight division a little bit. Horiguchi, obviously the challenger for this fight. If you get through him, there's not a ton of guys left in the division that you haven't beaten. Do you ever sit back and look and say, hey, I, I hope you get some new rising stars or I hope there's some new fresh challenges for me? Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, there's also, you know, I'm pretty sure I'll have to go back and do a couple more rematches and then hopefully there's new fresh talent that can get past those big sharks in the division. And, and that's a tough task itself because some guys you know, I think in my eyes, you want to fight those big sharks. That way, you know, let's say you, you don't fight those big sharks and you beat, you slay the dragon, you slay me, one of those big sharks are going to come up and take that belt from you right. just, just like that. So um, if I was him, I would go to that big shark tank just to get there. That way when you're there, you're there for a long time. In May, there's a lot of really interesting matchups for the flyweight division. John Dotson will return. He fights Zach Makovsky. Do you feel like if you get through Horiguchi and, and Dotson gets through Makovsky, that's another rematch they're going to have you yep. do? I think that's a uh, rematch that everybody wants to see, and I'm I'm not shying away from either. I would not mind getting there and, as I like to say, getting that ass again. <laughs> that's going to be a great fight, um, but first, you know, I got Kyoju Horiguchi. You seem so laid back about all this. Most of the time when champions are talking about, you know, their belts or their or their role in the division, they're so passionate, they say like, well, no one's taking this from me. Is that why you're so successful? Because you're able to have such an easygoing mentality? I would like to think so. I mean, a lot of people are so attached. You know, I'm the champion, I'm the best in the world, doing all this and all, yeah. all that stuff, which is fine, because, you know, you gotta believe in your own hype. But for me, it's, I'm, I'm gonna lose one day. I've lost before, so I, I felt it. I've lost a championship fight before, so I, I know how that feels. And I see other people, you know, lose their belts and then they get so, they get in a depression state and all that stuff. And I was like, ah, I'm not all about that. I was like, you know what? I love fighting. I love that I'm the champion. 
It's cool every, every round here calls me champ. I don't really care about it. My day's gonna come when I'm gonna lose. Um, is it gonna be this Saturday? We'll find out. But I train my butt off so it doesn't happen and we'll just see. We cannot wait to see you fight again. You're always so exciting. You're always going a thousand miles a minute. It's almost hard to keep up with you. Kind of have to watch replays so we can see what happened. But unfortunately, they're telling me this is the end of our one round. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, DJ. Hopefully, we'll catch up with you after your fight on Saturday night. Sounds good. Always Thanks. a pleasure.